In this video, I'm going to show how I turn this area in my garage into this. It's just a small backup system just for a few circuits in the house. Um, when I started this, I said, I'm not going to make the wiring look like that. And it ended up looking like that because I didn't buy all the parts at once. And in the future, we'll get that cleaned up, but it works really well. So I went with some SOK batteries and I'm going to repurpose these in the future. Another video I have planned and I'll do a 48 volt system uh, for the backup. But here I'm just trying to gauge the length of the jumpers, how I want to make them. If I did this again, I'd probably use a bus bar. And it's okay recommends a circuit breaker in between each battery going up to the bus bar. But I'm used to doing it this way, so that's how I did it on this one. And it turned out pretty good, works well. This is the crimper I was using back then. I have a different crimper now, I'll put in the description. It's just one off of Amazon. But you'll see here, this one doesn't work great. The dies are mislabeled. You can see I crimped that all the way down and the lug pulled right off. So I use the lug that's labeled one size smaller. Now you can see it's on there good. Put some heat shrink on them. I like the Ryobi heat gun. I actually have two of them. I keep one at home and one at work. And you know, for small projects, they work great. They do eat up batteries pretty fast, but I'm not doing any major manufacturing or anything. So uh, they work great for heat shrink. Here I'm going to make the rest of the jumpers. Now I went with the Xantrex. I'm just kind of used to working with them. A couple other brands. I've done some Victron. Um, I find it hard to get tech support from Victron. And with the Xantrex I could program it from the face. So I don't need anything special to program it. So I like that about it. I haven't hooked to a circuit breaker, but I'm gonna change that out to a class T fuse. And I built a cabinet for it. Yeah, I've got the cabinet all painted. So if you can, please like and subscribe. Here I put some cement board. And start to reinstall everything. There's the, the fuse I changed it out to. And I've got a sub panel. So I'm really probably only gonna do a couple circuits in the house and I don't leave them permanent. For me, this is just for emergencies right now. And I'll do some testing with it too. So here I'm setting the battery type. And this is not really gonna be a how-to video, but just more of what I did, what I'm using and how it turned out. I did run a receptacle off of it, so I have one in the garage so I can test right away with it. Don't have to go through the sub panel. Got some info off of the uh, Victron. Then I've had to fix a lot of installations. 
I even had Battleborn send me some of their customers. The shunt wasn't reading correctly. I don't even think the customers understood what was going on. But I found in the installations they weren't hooking all of the negative loads and charging to the shunt. So most of the times they forget to put the solar there. They put it directly to the battery. So the shunt has no idea that the solar did any charging to the batteries. And it makes it hard for it to keep track of what's going on. So remember, everything has to go through the shunt. So here I'm running my refrigerator in my house off of the inverter. And we're checking the watts and the amps and the volts. I ran it for about 24 hours and it used about 60% I think of the battery. So I think I could probably get a couple days out of it if I'm just running the refrigerator. So that was just a quick summary of what I used. Xantrex inverter, SOK 100 amp hour batteries, Victron shunt, Victron solar controller, which in a future video I'll go over the uh, solar portion of it. So thanks for watching.